This is a Mavic 2 Pro. And it is my very first drone that I have ever purchased of any kind, ever. About six months ago, I've been looking at different drones to buy and you know, when I should buy one. And then one day I was just like, you know what? I've been thinking about it too long. I'm just gonna go out and buy one. So I went straight into town, into the camera store, and I bought this for you know, 1,500 quid, which is quite a lot of money. But for that, I have got one of the best things I've ever purchased in terms of like camera equipment. Like, it's kind of hard to describe how good this is. I, I just can't get over it for like a first drone. Like, it's expensive, but it's so worth it. So I bought the drone on its own and I didn't buy the Fly More kit with it because there's no benefit to buying it with it and I was gonna learn to fly it and see if I wanted to keep it. And obviously I've kept it and I've since bought the Fly More kit because I've got you know, the bag here and the batteries and all that jazz. Coming from a beginner's perspective, as someone who's never bought a drone before, the Mavic 2 Pro is actually really good. It's kind of idiot proofed mostly. It is kind of idiot proofed, but you know, don't fly it into a tree like I did in that clip. Actually, I didn't actually fly it into a tree. I was testing out automatic modes. My brother was riding his motorbike and he, I set the drone to follow him. He went too quickly. The drone got confused and flew into a tree trying to follow him and uh, eh, it didn't get damaged. Um, don't crash your uh, brand new 1500 quid drone two weeks after getting it. So in order to test out a drone like this, you need to fly it. And I had to pick somewhere to fly. So I decided to get the train up to Drogheda, where there's the Boyne Valley Railway Viaduct, which is this huge bridge over the Boyne River. And it's, it's absolutely fabulous to look at. It was a perfect place to fly a drone. In Drogheda, something interesting happened to me. I was about to start flying the drone. I'd set up my camera, I was doing a few long exposures while I was there just to see how they turned out. Um, the day was honestly kind of crap. It was a very gray day, so there wasn't very good light. But I was on this green area down by the river and I noticed another photographer or camera guy set up further down the bank. And he had a camera set up on a tripod. So I went down and I was you know, wondering maybe he's doing a long exposure or something like that. And I didn't want to have my drone like fly across his long exposure and leave a big black streak or maybe his time lapsing. I wasn't sure what he was doing. So I decided to just go down and say hi. And I went down to him and said, hey, I'm about to start flying my drone. It's not going to bother you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, but he says you want to get it into the air quickly because there's a steam train coming in about five minutes. So I got the drone up and it was sweet, it was, uh, it was sweet. Like the footage just looked incredible going across that bridge. So after my sort of lucky break with the, uh, with the steam train, flew the drone around some more, got tested out some of the, the quick shots and stuff, which are really handy. I'll probably do a separate video on quick shots, but overall as something to buy, if you want a good drone, I'm gonna stick with this and recommend it because it is amazingly good. The only problem is it's very expensive. And 
really if you want the good stuff you're gonna have to pay for it but it is I, I just can't get over how good it is like it's such a cool bit of kit and it lets you do so much that I just couldn't do before things like like establishing shots, tracking shots, following things around, like I've followed some sheep around with it. And by the way, these sheep belong to my uncle who's a farmer. So, you know, I'm not gonna be like chasing random farmer sheep around with my drone. I'm not stupid. So after about a month of owning it, I decided to pick up the Fly More kit. It comes with this very stylish sort of man bag for your drone, satchel purse looking thing. Um, honestly, I'm not, too mad on this bag it's a bit kind of awkward it's good for transporting the drone around but I don't know it, it's it's not great it's okay it, it functions but I, I'd rather something nice or maybe a hard case or something like that is gonna be on my Amazon list in the future but the reason you buy the fly more kit is not for the bag you buy it for the batteries basically so you get two more intelligent flight batteries with the fly more kit and you also get this gadget which is a multi charger and it just folds out like so and then you can pop your drone batteries in like that and it can hold up to four batteries and it actually holds the batteries quite securely so you can charge your four batteries but it doesn't charge in parallel it only charges in series which is really weird and uh, maybe the power draw is too high for this charger because you use this charger you connect the like drone battery connector kind of goes into the the socket on the bottom of the multi-charger here so it's okay and um, it only charges the battery sequentially so it'll charge the highest capacity battery first so if you have a battery at like 90% it'll top that off then it'll go down to your 50% and it'll charge your two dead batteries but it is uh, pretty useful the other things that come with the fly more kit uh, one very useful thing is this little gadget here which uh, actually connects to your battery your drone battery and it adds USB ports to it so it gives you two USB ports, which allows you to charge the controller and your phone, basically. And the controller actually charges by taking out this little side cable. I'll talk a little bit more about the controller in a bit once I'm done with the batteries, because there's a gripe I have with the batteries and particularly with this little thing. Why doesn't this let me charge the battery over USB? If you're able to draw power from the battery and step it down, I believe these are like 16 volt. They're 15.4 volt batteries, okay? If you're able to step that down to five volts for USB, why can't I do the reverse and like charge this with USB? I, I don't understand this um, at all. I don't understand why this is a thing. DJ, I make it happen. Make a little gadget like this so I don't have to haul the, uh, the Giganticus Bricicus around with me anymore because it's, it's too big. Uh, even if you had like one of these that was USB powered, that would be awesome actually. Make that instead make, make a usb kind of dock multi-charger thingy -doodle. i don't know anyway that's it for like the batteries um that's the fly more kit that's that's basically what i've got so far uh, i do have some nd filters these are the polar pro ones they're amazing they're absolutely necessary and because these are necessary and actually kind of expensive but they're really good with the fly more kit and everything realistically to get a mavic pro to up and running properly for doing like proper work with it you're looking at about 2,000 euro all in for your filters uh, for video and your extra batteries and your fly more kit and all that jazz so impressions of the controller very good it's nice it's solid it um it fits well in your hand you know the uh, the joysticks unscrew and slot in here and actually oddly enough these are the same joysticks that the ronin s uses in fact let me let me get the Ronin. let me get one off the ronin s my ronin s is at the bottom of this bookshelf so this is a little tiny like like little tiny 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 joystick that the ronin s comes with but you can actually screw that into the controller and you get a sort of little like little nipple controller ball thing don't do this because it's decreasing the length of control, control stick that you have. And uh, because it's decreasing the length, it means you have, you only have to move it a shorter distance uh, to do the same maneuver as the longer control stick. So don't, don't do that. But it's kind of funny the way they use the same joystick. Now I'm just gonna put this back on because if I don't, I will lose it. And then my Ronin S will be sad. 
So yeah, controller's um, good. The controller battery lasts long enough uh, to run down all three drone batteries, no bother. Um, I'd say run down four easily enough, but you can charge this with a micro B charger on the side here. And this is actually the USB port that your phone connects to. So it comes with three wires. So this is the wire here. I have to use the USB-C connector because I have a Google Pixel XL, uh, the OG one, and that's what I'm using the DJI Go on. And it works absolutely fine. It's, it's brilliant. Um, you get a proxy version of your recording on your phone. So if the drone you know, collapses into the sea, you're 2,000 euro out of pocket. Uh, I'd rather not think about that. But overall, controller's good. You've got your record, your picture button. Uh, I use this for focusing, got power, return to home, pause flight. And then you've got this weird little like nipply, like this little nipplet here, uh, sort of here, that's the nipplet. And the nipplet can be configured. I actually have it customized to put the aperture on up down and my ISO on left right. So I can manually control the camera while flying the drone, which is actually really nice. So let's talk about that camera on the drone. So it has a one inch sensor and it uses a Sony sensor. It says Hasselblad on the front of the camera, but that's only the signal processing coming off the sensor and compression and all that. This is a Sony sensor camera. Um, I put money on it being the same one or a very similar one to the RX100 series because they use one inch sensors as well. But the camera is excellent. It, it shoots 4K, 24 is what I usually use. Uh, it has a high, you know, it's nice 100 megabit footage. It's H.265. It's 10 bit D-Log 422. Sorry, 420, not 422. And it's absolutely wonderful. Um, this is also sort of the best camera drone you can buy in this sort of size. So in this form factor, if you want to go bigger, if you want to go better, you need to go bigger, be, you're looking at phantoms and, and stuff like that, but this, this is the best you can do. And I absolutely love this camera. And one of the nice things about the camera is that it has a variable aperture. So the, all the other DJI drones of this size don't have that, which means you are absolutely reliant on your ND filters. And all you can do then is adjust your ISO to get your exposure correct. But having a variable aperture is huge because it lets you lock your shutter speed at a 150th of a second, um, because I shoot at 24p, you know, 180 degree shutter rule, all that jazz. So you can actually stop your aperture up and down to get your exposure perfect, lock it, and then you can fly around with, you know, f4, f5.6, f3, 2, f2.8, um, and generally shoot it between f3.5 and f5.6, because that's where I found the lens to be the sharpest. And, you know, once you focus it correctly, because it'd be kind of hard to see with the screen, on your phone but overall I'm super happy with the drone like it, it's really nice and um, it fits in my backpack kind of it can only fit lying down in my backpack it won't fit in vertically in either of my bags um, I have the Pro Tactic 450 version 1 and the low pro fast pack 250 for like daily travel so I'm super happy with the drone it's awesome what's it like to fly honestly it's a dream it's, it's an absolute dream to fly this thing. Like it just flies so effortlessly because it's positioning system is so good. It will hover in place and then you, you don't have to like keep the throttle up to keep it at the right height. It'll just lock there. And then you can just use the right thumbstick to like move it left, right, up, down. And then your right thumbstick is uh, altitude gain, altitude loss and rotate the drone or yaw, which is kind of weird. Um, I keep meaning to change the stick layout to be the other way around. So this is like altitude and turn and this is strafe. Because if you're playing like a video game on the Xbox, which I've done a bit too much of, your left stick is generally your movement stick and your right stick is your aiming stick, which would map more accurately to the drone. So, but I've gotten kind of used to now the way it is. So if I change it, I'll probably crash the damn thing. And that's something I want to talk about because this thing is like, really good to control it it's kind of idiot proofed with all the uh, obstacle avoidance sensors if you turn them on so first few flights i actually had them turned off it turns out you have to manually turn them on and i only turn on for like certain quick shot modes and stuff so it, it's really confusing but it, it's good it's also kind of scary because this thing is fast 
Like this thing in sport mode, I've tested it. I've got it up to around 55 kilometers an hour. And um, that was because of headwinds. It, you know, to put that in perspective, I flew this one and a half kilometers away over some farmland and then booked it back as quick as I could uh, using the thing. I didn't use return to home and it was doing 55 kilometers an hour. So it was doing over 30 to 35 miles an hour, which is really fast. And to cover one and a half kilometers took it under two minutes. I was sucking juice out of the battery now, in fairness, you know, it was, it was drinking the diesel, but it was really good. And that's really it. I've just basically spent the last 10 minutes gushing over this thing. Uh, so yeah, it's sweet. I'll see you next time.